Cunningham, St. Francis de Sales Parish, welcomes our parishioners and visitors on this 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Presiding at the Mass today will be Father Richard, our pastor. He will be assisted by Deacon Russ Hinger. Let us begin the celebration by singing Psalm number 331. Hallelujah, sing to Jesus, M331. Please stand. <laughs> Show the light of your truth to those who go astray. 
so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
be reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, <laughs> A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road. But when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw it, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins, and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel. Of the Lord. Good evening. 
Earlier today, at 10 o'clock this morning, the priests and the lay faithful of the diocese, we gathered for the bishop to have a funeral mass at the cathedral um, for one of our very young seminarians who died uh, this middle of this week. His funeral was today. He was studying in Wisconsin in the seminary to be a priest for the diocese. But he got very, very, very sick about three or four months ago and he never recovered. Um, so we had his funeral today. I think he's only 23, I think, 23, 24. Um, so it was a very uh, sad day. It has been a sad couple of weeks for us, but particularly today. Uh, so we gave him the greatest honor we could. Christian burial. Because he was studying to be to go, he was in the seminary and he truly, truly desired to be um, eventually the ordained a priest. Um, church law, canon law suggests that in a situation like that, you actually give them a priest's burial. Um, so he was given a priest's burial. Um, today and is actually buried this morning at the cemetery downtown where they buried the priests. So that's where he is buried. Let us pray for his soul. His name is Angel Miguel Perez Mendez um, and his grieving parents uh, who are quite distraught. And of course for the Bishop of the Diocese and um, the, the Diocese of Tucson at, at large. We were saying that um, we're looking for priests to help us out. Now we lose one uh, who is in college studying. Uh, so it's uh, a very sad situation for us. So we're offering this Mass today for his soul and for the consolation of his, his, parent, his family. I was privileged to spend some time, roughly the other way around, he spent some time with me um, when I was recuperating after brain surgery at St. Margaret Mary Parish on the other side of the freeway. Um, that's his parish, so he would come and spend time uh, with me there once in a while. So I will have been thinking of him for some time. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. This is the young man addressing Jesus. He is saying these words to Jesus. And he is quoting from Old Testament scripture. He's quoting from Numbers, the book of Numbers and the book of Deuteronomy. And then he also asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? And as we have now come to understand this very familiar story in Luke's Gospel, in response to who is my neighbor, Jesus tells him the story of what we now call the story of the good Samaritan. The story of the man who is in need after uh, encountering some challenge on his way, and then the story talks about various people who noticed he was in need but did not come to his aid until this Samaritan came and did what today we have come to know as one of the greatest deeds in the scriptures. Intellectually, we can all analyze and say, of course, it's, it's good to reach out to those who are in need, of course. It's a human thing, you know, you see somebody in need, you take care of it, of course. It's a, sometimes we say, it's a, it's a no-brainer. For those who still have a brain, I don't. <laughs> So intellectually, we can say, yes, it's what you do. 
But when you think of it, it's a story that is asking us to reflect on the connection or maybe the disconnect between external holiness and interior holiness. Two different things. It is not by accident that in the story we hear in the list of the people who went by, there was a priest there who is visibly the symbol of holiness, the symbol of the praying community, a visible presence um, of the divine. Uh, sometimes children would even say, that a priest is, is, is God. How many times have I met a little kid uh, and they would ask, hey, are you God? <laughs> and I say, no, hey, I'm not God. The priest is, the, is a visible symbol of a praying community. And all of us are called to leave the vocation of holiness. But you see, there is a difference between this external holiness and the interior holiness. Because if what we do, or if, we want, if, if what we are seeing to do does not translate into that interior development, interior spirituality, interior grace, then there is a disconnect. So while we might say, yes, of course, you can reach out to those in need, when you begin to peel back the curtain, so to speak, does that holiness still apply? And there's one way for us to find out and that is to ask ourselves continuously the question of the young man in the gospel today. Well, who exactly is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? If you were to make your list of who is your neighbor, who will not be on that list? Let's start from there. Who will not be on your list? So we think about this, there are things we cannot see visibly. We probably experience them. How do you know somebody who is full of compassion? You don't see compassion. How do you know somebody who is forgiving? You don't see them. How do you see somebody who is compassionate? You don't always see that. Why? Because these things come from within. Somewhere else in Matthew's Gospel, the Lord Jesus tells us in the Scriptures, He says, it is what comes out of us that makes us unclean most of the time. How we relate to people, how we talk to them, how we think about them, those are the things that make us unholy. Again, if you were to make your list, who would not be on it? That's your neighbor. Let us pray today, my brothers and sisters, that we will be able to find a way to connect our external holiness, our exhibition of holiness, the visible signs of our holiness. What are those visible signs? We pray. We go to church, we're in church now. We do all of the things that perhaps exhibit our holiness. How much of that is interior? So let us find a way to connect these external things to the internal. What do I think of somebody? What's my perception of somebody? And how often am I judgmental to somebody because they're living whatever life it is that they have chosen to live. It doesn't rhyme with mine, but then I make their life my problem. Holiness is internal. Am I being a good neighbor at that point? 
Let us think of these things and ask grace upon us for all the moments that we fail, for all the moments that we don't meet the, the standard or the mark that is set for us in our weaknesses. May the Lord help us to reach out, not those, not just to those who are physically in need, but those who are just different. Why are they different? They are different because they are different. So we have to get to the point to have an understanding of that. Or else we will be the ones who have walked by and not paid attention because we have closed ourselves out to the possibility of grace. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is the one who will not make my list. And I know that. You know that. You have those who will not be on your list, correct? You don't have to answer that. <laughs> but that's who your neighbor is. So the job now is to find a way to allow grace to help us to go beyond those barriers we have set to either break them down or overcome them or go around them and reach out and be Christian to them in our words, in our thoughts, in our being, and in our mind. Amen? Amen. Amen. May the soul of Miguel Miguel and the souls of the faithful prophet with the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. I believe in my God, the Father of all things, the of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was he of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and for our discarded. He suffered death for his burial, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in and glory to judge the living and the dead, and that his kingdom will have no I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God, who has spoken to his mouths. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, I confess for the baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And the light of the world to come. In our need, we turn to the Lord who hears us. We give him thanks and it's also express our gratitude. May the good Lord hear us and bless us. For the church, that through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, she may weather difficult times with holiness and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, that through the mercy of God all may come to know the gospel message and the ways of righteousness and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all who hunger, may the Lord fill their every physical and spiritual need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for we who worship and share community here. May the Holy Spirit continue to enkindle in us the fire of his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To all who have died, may the saints and angels soon welcome them to the fullness of God's love in the perfection of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, we mention the individual personal intentions we bring to this celebration of the Eucharist. For these, and for all the intentions included in our book of remembrance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that, what, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation is number 475 for the Jewish Lecture, 475.
Prayer, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of His name. For the glory of Amen. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your of your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and the Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that the people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Son, his wondrous resurrection, 
and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to the second coming, we offer you the thanksgiving, this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to your Son. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and feel this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Francis the Sales, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We please to confer in faith and charity your pilgrim church on it, with the seventh, Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and with him. O God Almighty, Father, illuminate your purple spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever. Peace, Bill. Peace, Bill. Peace. 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 Peace.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us say the arm of Christi, the back of your missile. Soul of Christ, as I find body of Christ, save me. Love of Christ, heed it me. Father of Christ, I am the Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. The Lord of Jesus is here with me. The beginning of your own life, hide me. Separate me from you, and let me never be. From the evil of God, protect me. And if I go, I will die. Some announcements. Registration for religious education classes will begin soon. Teachers are needed for grades pre-K through 12th grade. No experience is necessary. Training and materials will be supplied. This is a vital ministry. Our kids need you to help them in their Catholic faith journey. Please call Terry or Maureen. That's Terry or Maureen at the parish phone number for more information. Tucson Electric Power will be coming to St. Francis to give us hints and some goodies to help save money and our environment. Please mark Sunday, July 17th, on your calendar. It will be at noon in the O'Leary Room. This is an informative and fun way to spend a bit of time. Refreshments will be served, so call the office to reserve your spot. We are in the process of making an updated parish photo album. If you need your picture taken, stop by the parish center after Sunday morning masses and see Cheryl. <coughs> Returning and active Catholics, welcome. If you are a Catholic who has been away, we invite you to be an active part of us again. Landings is a program that offers a safe place to land, a place for listening and being heard, a place for asking questions and reconnecting with the faith as an adult. Our next session will be held on Mondays from August 1st through September 26th and will be coordinated by Kristen Van Tilbo. If you are interested, Please see the bulletin or call the office. Space is limited. Finally, attention high school teens. Please see the bulletin regarding our upcoming movie night on July 24th. Please see the bulletin regarding our upcoming symposium on August 27th. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in our Lord. Be our protection against the wickedness and the of the Lord. May God be here, we humbly pray, and you are our Prince of the Heavenly Host, the Father of God. In all the human spirits, who cry around the world, seek the room of our souls. Thank you very much for coming. Have a good night and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. The mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Master is ended.
Go in peace to all that serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Closing in number 535. Holy God, we praise thy name. 505. Yeah.